and today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial overview of how I edited my latest travel film 48 hours in Bangkok <laughs> Now, when I put this video out on YouTube, the number one most prominent piece of feedback that I received through Instagram comments and DMs was, please make a tutorial on how you edited this video, transitions, and how you did the sound effects. Where did I get my sound effects from? How did you do the sound? So this video is gonna quickly touch on those two parts of this travel film, how I did the transitions, and how I did the sound for this video. So, um, first off, you can see here my whole timeline video on the top layer here and audio bottom layer below. As you can see, there are so many more um, audio clips and layers than the actual video itself. And when you're doing a film like this where it's very, um, it's very visual based, you want to bring those visuals to life with sound. So when you see a car, you want to have that, that engine playing in the background um, more than just music. The sound effects are what going to bring a film like this to life and really dive you into the visual and make you feel like you were there, like you, you were experienced it yourself. So um, up, I got a lot of questions as well what this layer above the adjustment layer was. And what this is is a 35 millimeter film grain. You can see right here it's just a film grain overlay that I overlaid my entire you know, timeline. And what I did with each film grain layer is I adjusted the blend mode to soft light. Um, you can either overlay it or soft light. Um, I do either of those, but this one in particular, I chose soft light and I laid that grain over my entire timeline. Now, here is my adjustment layer, and what my adjustment layer consists of is the overall color and look for the video. So here you can see my Lumetri color, um, and I used, uh, this is where I am applied my LUT. So right here, I just used a standard, the Fuji um, 250D by Adobe. I didn't use any crazy LUT in particular, I just used a standard Fuji LUT from Adobe, and then tweaked the settings from there. So on um, typically my videos, I like to underexpose things. So I drop the exposure down to a negative one, drop the contrast, drop the highlights, drop the whites. I pretty much took everything into the negative under my basic color correction. Then for the LUT, under the creative tab, again, I use the Fuji LUT. And what I did is give it a slight film fade um, I didn't sharpen it because I added a whole separate sharpen effect by itself and barely boosted the vibrance. So that's kind of what I did for my color. And on top of that, I added a levels, which I usually, these are the three, the four tabs I play with in levels. I crushed the black um, input level, so they're set to zero, and I had it set to 30. Um, I dropped the white input level from 250 to 225 and black output level I took from zero to a 25 to kind of give it a slightly more faded look. You can see the difference there when I on and off that. Um, so yeah, I had the Lumetri color levels. Um, I added sharpening, I selected 28, and then Magic Bullet, what I did is add a few um, effects in the Magic Bullet plugin. I added slight diffusion. I like to add slight diffusion to all my um, videos. Um, an edge blur just to kind of blur the corners and the edges of the entire video as well as gave it a slight pop by using the pop filter and so you can kind of see what that looks like on and off here very very subtle very subtle but so yeah so all these effects right here are what are applied to my adjustment layer and anything on your adjustment layer will affect any clips below it so this adjustment layer is affecting all these clips below it right here. All right, so let's get into the editing. I'm gonna take off this color right here so it plays back a little smoother. 
you can see the color on and off there as well. So there's on, off, on, off. And a lot of people ask me what profile I shoot in. This was shot on the Canon 1DX Mark II in the CineStyle profile. So 1DX Mark II CineStyle profile. Some quick transitions there. And now how we're going to bring that to life and make those transitions um, and those quick clips really pop is by adding sound. So as you can see right down here below um, these video clips, I have different sound effects that are enhancing these transitions. So for example, right here, this is actually just a simple umbrella opening. And on all my sound effects, I add a reverb. So you can see that effect added right here. So I'll typically come into the effects tab and I'll look for a reverb, sound reverb, I'll place that on there. And then I always typically do like either a large room or a large hall to just give it a longer delay, a bigger reverberation. And this I feel like um, gives the sound a more dreamlike feel in a sense. Um, it feels less crisp and feels more airy and dreamlike. So to all my clips, sounds below, I always add a reverb. Now this is a simple umbrella opening um, and I put that right on this transition right here and it just kind of gives this kind of cool quick little sound that makes it for a good transition. Right after that comes a whoosh right here to transition from running along these to this upward clip on these crickets. So it just kind of goes from this whoosh. Yeah, that was, that was bad. But anyways, so you're just going to want to stack a, and here's another whoosh right here um, and these green clips are all sound effects that I have from my internal stock library I have a library of sound effects that I use um, right here 1000 sound effects and I get different sound effects uh, like whooshes and umbrella opening and different foley's and so I have a little stock library of some sounds that I use here's some swishes but the majority of the sounds um, from these video or these videos are from YouTube. And that's what I want you guys to take away from this is that you can literally find any sound effect you want from YouTube. So for example, on this, let me find a good clip. Somewhere over here, there was a motorbike and I didn't have any sound a, of a motorbike. So what I did is I went to YouTube and I typed in Vespa sound effect and then look at all these things that pop up Vooters Vespa sound Vespa scooter scooter sound effect Vespa exhaust sound um, the list goes on and so I just I think I selected this top one actually and I have a plugin um, via my web browser that allows me to straight download the, the video file um, so if you can find this plugin, it uh, makes downloading videos and sounds from YouTube very, very easy. If not, you would just copy this link and go to like a YouTube converter website and just download the file. But there are YouTube channels that put thousands of sounds and sound effects. You can find any sound effect in the world on YouTube. And so the majority of all these sounds are from YouTube. Um, I think this clip right here is a wind whoosh sound effect. It's just a... I think like a five minute clip of wind blowing pulled that from YouTube. Um, here's one of, I think, city noise pulled that from YouTube. So you can go find any sound effects you want on YouTube and download them and put them into your project. Um, there's channels up there for this specific reason. When you're talking, dealing with sound effects, you obviously want to put sound effects that bring those images to life. So for example, I have a scooter scootering away from me. So I put this scooter sound effect. Um, it's not going very fast. So I chose a moment where in the sound effect, it's not blazing speed. It's just kind of purring along. And as the scooter moves away from me, I actually keyframe this sound effect to get quieter. So it starts out louder here. And then by the end of the clip, it gets a little quieter here. So again, think critically when you're dealing with your sounds, like what is the clip about, what's happening in the clip, and adjust your sounds and pick sounds that will enhance that image. Um, so again, sound effects, I'm trying not to go into too much detail here, trying to make it um, very 
brief but get the point across of how to find your sounds and how to edit your sounds um, and how I personally do it. So again, reverb to all my clips. On moment where there's transitions, I use whooshes and different um, effects like an umbrella opening or something to kind of give these punchier sounds. And then in the background, I have background noise like a uh, city noise playing in the background. I have some Chinese, low, low Chinese music playing because this was Chinatown. So this whole section right here for these little transitions and clips are very sound heavy. Um, and you can see that throughout my projects as well over here especially this section. So you notice right here is where the most um, kind of quick chops and edits in the entire video are. So as a result, I have lots of sound effects of whooshes and different, um, you know, umbrella opening, whooshes, uh, delays, uh, motorcycles, sounds, cities. This is where the effects, sound effects heavy portion of the video is because there's so many quick different clips and for each clip I either have a sound effect or I have some transition into the next clip and you can see this little um, section here So again, just think critically about your sounds. And, and another example is right here. I have this clip being sped up and then all of a sudden it, it slows down right there. So as a result, I have this kind of this riser clip that it sounds like it's speeding up and then it stops. And that's the moment I have it stop is right at the moment that the clip goes into slow motion and slows down on the kitty because it's fast, fast, fast and then boom, hits and slows down. So that's pretty much you know how I do my sound for these types of videos. It takes a lot of trial and error and patience and it's tedious, it's not the most fun thing in the world. The fun part is editing your video, um, but the sounds are what are going to bring it to life and bring it full circle. Next, the last thing that I'm gonna talk about is the transitions. And the answer is the transitions are in how I shot the video. So at the beginning and end of each clip, I would either pan into the shot and then pan away, or you know I'd be already locked on a shot and then pan away. And so what this does is it allows me to transition from shot to shot in like these smooth transitions that are, are blind to the eye. So they seem very seamless and fluid in the video because I'm blending them and cutting them together on those whip pans. It's not something you can do in post. You can't just edit that in post. You have to physically shoot it that way knowing how you're going to edit it. So a quick, to, quick example of that is this. So this clip right here is just a quick clip of me passing by some wires and it's moving in an upward manner. And right here, we jump into another clip that's moving in an upward manner to the statue. So it's moving so quickly and so fast and in the same direction that when you watch it together, it seems like one seamless motion. And then you throw a sound effect right at that transition and it just brings it all together. So as you can see, very seamless, but again, that's how I shot and how I edited. You can't just shoot it standard, never move the video camera, and then try and edit it that way. It's literally, it's a mixture of the two things, editing and shooting. So let me give you one, one more example here. So right here on this clip, I start on this flag, and at the end of the clip, I start to whip and pan away. Then right here, I jump into another clip where I'm moving in that same direction. And then again, moving that same direction, I jump into another clip. And you can't even notice the cut here because as you can see from right here, I pan into this black space and now this is the next clip. And I'm starting in black space and I move from the black space out to a sign. These are two completely different areas of, of the city. This spot and this spot are not the same spot. But if you watch it together, you would never know.
They appear to be seamless, but that is just how it's edited and shot. So again, panning to a dark space, start the next clip on a dark space, and I whip pan out of that shot to there. So again, that's how I shot and edited. Let me see if I can find one more. Hopefully, I hope this is clear to you guys. I hope I'm doing a decent job of explaining this. So here's another example. So I'm starting on the sign and I start to pan away, away, away and down past this car. And now right here is where I make the transition to the next clip and next clip. So I pan away and then I jump into the next clip where I start panning into the shot over to a sign. So now those two clips together from the panning away to the panning into the shot appear seamless and like they're the same shot and make for a really cool transition even though they're two different shots. And it's as simple as that. It's just shooting and cutting on the right moments. And another way you can enhance this um, is by just using a quick blend mode and changing the opacity. And what I mean by that is if you wanted to, you could really, you could overlay this clip and then you could take the opacity, set a keyframe, go to the beginning clip, set a keyframe and start it at zero. So it literally blends in to the next clip. So instead of a hard cut, we now change the opacity into the next clip and same kind of thing. It just blends it together. So you can either hard cut in or just pick like one to two frames that you drop the opacity and do a little keyframe transition. And again, to bring these transitions to life using whoosh sound effects or different sound effects to enhance that transition and, and make it appear, um, just really bring it to life. So I hope um, you guys kind of gather how I edit these videos and I hope that helped and you guys learned something from this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment in the description, not the description, my goodness. Please feel free to comment in the comment section below. I'll try to answer any and all questions um, and that you guys have. And if you guys have any ideas as far as you know the next place you want me to go and travel and shoot a film of, please let me know in the comments below as well. I'm always looking for cool new places to go travel and see adventure and, you know, photograph and film. So with that being said, I appreciate you guys for watching. And I hope again that you learned something from this. Leave a like, a thumbs up, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.